Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's a beautiful morning today here. We record this show, and right now there's a little bit of a rain. We call it a spritzing of rain coming by our, our offices and a beautiful rainbow, too. In Hawaii, we call rain blessings. That's what we don't call it rain. We call it blessings. And that's the way the Lord wants to rain down His Holy Spirit on you and bless you. And, and the gospel is all about good news. And we're going to share with our friend Alan Smith, who's an expert on Fulton Sheen, more about the good news of Jesus Christ when we get back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We believe at the Bear Wozniak Adventure that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild, and we do mean wild, the wild adventure of God's will. When you abandon yourself to God's will, all kinds of cool things happen uh, because you get to be under the spout where the blessings come out, and you get to watch God move because you're not, you're, you're not, um, you're not, uh, you know, out and about, away from what the work God is doing, you're right in the heart of what He's doing, and you get to see God move, and it's just so exciting to be, to be uh, in the middle of of uh, that, riding that wave of the Holy Spirit, as we as we say here. You know, it's kind of cool to be a member of a really cool uh, group. I, I mean, the Catholic Church is really just a big club. It's just an organization. There's a church that I know of. I'm not going to say that where it is, but the name of the church is Zion Club. You know, the church is just a club. It's just a place where, like any other organization, and uh, it's run by n- democracy, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of got its— and it's really cool to be part of the— I remember the old, the old uh, song, uh, I think it was Jan and Dean said, so- sung about a really cool club called the Anaheim Akuka Manga Sewing Circle Book Review and Timing Association. The Catholic Church is just kind of like that. It's just a cool club. Is that right? Is that what the Catholic Church is? It's just a, it's a really cool organization? Or is it an organism? Are we actually the body of Christ? And if we are an organization, by the way, we're the longest standing organization in history, 2,000 years of history of the Catholic Church. So if all we are is an organization, we're pretty, still pretty cool. But we're more than that. The Catechism over there in about paragraph 788, 790, talks about how we're part of the body of Christ. He is the head of the body of Christ, and it says we're the bride of Christ. We're much more than just a club. We're much more than just an organization. We're much more than just an NGO. We are the living uh, body of Jesus Christ here on earth, and what a privilege. And it's so cool, you know, like when I was in, in, in New York about 15 years ago, I'm on my way to go surf a contest in France, and I'm looking across the, the Times Square, and I see a dude, and I go, that guy's a surfer. I can just pick him out in a crowd. He, all the millions of people, that guy's a surfer. And I went over towards him. I didn't catch up with him, but I went right around, right somewhere. It wasn't in Times Square. It was near there. There was actually a surf shop that he had probably just come out of. It well, didn't sell surfboards, very many anyway. Maybe sold some surf wax. But he was a member of my tribe. But how often as Christians are you around someone you just know, you just know they're Christians. You can sense the Holy Spirit within them. Isn't it cool that, think about this, Peter and John, dudes, they're, they're knowing Jesus. They, they know Jesus. They, they've been hanging out with him, fishing with him, Friday night fish fries, all that kind of stuff. Then he's dead, resurrected, ascends, and then they get to know Jesus on a more personal, intimate basis than they ever could have when he was there with them on earth. Because now he's taken residence through the spirit of adoption. He's taken residence into the innermost part of their being, in the, the deepest part of the temple of God within us. In that sense, the, the catechism says that they had a more intense, is the word they use, a more intense, not intimate. The word the catechism uses is a more intense relationship with Jesus. Think about this. This guy that they knew and loved and knew so well is suddenly they can go, is that you, Jesus? <laughs> is that you inside me? 
how's it how's it going man what's what are we up to today you know and, and jesus sending them on missions and they find the vitality and the excitement of being of having jesus christ and, and when jesus comes he brings his father and the holy spirit you know they all come they're they're, they're a package deal and and you and, and they're living this vital life with christ so we're uh it's, it's not just an organization it's not just a club the church is the body of christ so uh, if you're not a member of the Catholic Church, you're not not a member of the Body of Christ yet. You got to go talk to you. Got to write us, let us let us know, and we'll we'll hook you up, get you get you on the right track towards uh, towards that. Today we got Alan Smith with us. Our third effort to do this recording. Once we uh, we had a, something go wrong on our end, and then we recorded a whole interview, and there was a there was a there was a challenge, right, Alan? We're not sure what it was exactly, but we got it sorted out. And so we're determined to get this this uh, this interview with our friend Alan Smith. And aloha, Alan. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, Bear. Great to have be back on the network. <laughs> and uh, you were right. Uh, I like to say the devil was wagging his tail uh, with technology. He was <laughs> knocking out our sound. He was knocking out our feed. Uh, but uh, because we were talking about uh, how Archbishop Sheen helps sinners like you and me uh, overcome sin uh, using his secret formula. And we're so. going to go deeper into that, but you make a really cool statement, Alan, because you say wagging the tail. Uh, we wrote, on our on our TV show, we rode down the, the tail of the dragon there, there in the southern part of North Carolina. And do you know what the Bible says? The Bible refers to Satan as the dragon. You're right. But he it refers to him as the fleeing dragon, the fleeing dragon. He's, he's on the run. He may take a sweep at you with his tail, but he's on the run. He's been defeated. He's, he cowers in the face of, a, of any Christian because Jesus is, is resident them. So you are right. He's on the run. We won the battle. We just kind of kind of finished. It's like when, you, when they won the battle, the ball just said the war had been, war had been won, but they just had to kind of finish, finish it up. That's where we are as Christians and as the body of Christ. So, yeah, he, he, he's the great dragon. He's the, he's the, he's, he's been our enemy since, you know, for so long. But he's, he's been whipped. And he can only hit us with his tail. He can't, he can't uh, devour us unless we turn ourselves, open ourselves up to him. So let's talk a little about, bit about that. I wanna, let's go right into this. Alan Smith, you love Fulton Sheen. And one of your books is titled what the seven last words of christ it's called the cries of jesus from the cross and uh, again these seven cries that uh, he gave uh, on mount calvary i like to call it his second sermon on the mount his first sermon oh my was the beatitudes did you come up with sermon. that did you come up with that that thing that statement uh, yeah yeah I like you didn't steal it from, spirit <laughs> you didn't steal it from augustine or one of the early church fathers no. or Fulch. that's awesome can you say that again that's so cool yeah, uh, this was his second Sermon on the Mount. The first one was the Beatitudes. The second one was his seven last words. Wow. But it was on a mount. So, wow. uh, and it's a sermon that we need to ponder, reflect, and just apply into our lives. And uh, what Fulton Sheen did was for 58 consecutive years, he gave a talk on the seven last words with a different theme. And so, um, I've got lots to share, lots to share. Well, you were focusing, and we've got to take a break here in a minute, so we'll just get the ball rolling down the hill, but those seven words you said can highlight uh, the antidote to, um, to the, the seven deadly sins and also uh, it, it challenges and encourages us in the seven virtues. Do you think we could go one at a time through the, the different words? What was the first right. word? So the first word was... Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that was the word that shocked the world. I don't think anyone was expecting that uh, to come from his lips when he was pinned to a cross. And uh, so there's lots to uh, you know, chew on with that. Uh, the second word that our Lord spoke was to the good thief when he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Uh, the third statement or the third word from the cross was, woman, behold your son. And to the apostle he loved, behold your mother. The fourth word was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The fifth being those words, I thirst. The sixth time he spoke from the cross, he said, it is finished. And the seventh word was, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And uh, Fulton Sheen said, uh, again, there's no 
better preacher in the whole history of the world than the dying Christ, and there's no better sermon than the seven last words. You know, when, when it's true, when you know that moment when you're with a loved one and they're passing away, those last words from them are so significant and so profound. And so the, these words of, for, from Christ on the cross, uh, the, the, the second Sermon on the Mount, as you say, we're going we're gonna to dig deeper into that. But first, Ellen, can you tell us um, where they can find your book? Where they, can they find you? All right. They can find me at my website, bishopsheentoday.com. And uh, when I named it, I thought, what do we need today? We need some Bishop Sheen. So it's simply bishopsheentoday.com. And uh, you'll find hundreds of hours of Sheen's videos and audio recordings. So again, bishopsheentoday.com. I mean, there's more, more and, videos and audio of him. Any, I mean, you just went through everywhere and pulled out yes. all that video. I mean, it's a you love Fulton yeah. Sheen, that's the main website to go to. Yeah. And but we got we got to take a break. We got to yeah. take a break, Alan. We're we're talking with Alan Smith. He's a radio guy. He knows he knows we need to take breaks. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. This is Daniel Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Shoot. A shoot is something folks today think of as plain old fun. You know, it's that tube you slide down with acceleration into a pool of warm water. But to a wagon master on the Oregon Trail, it meant nothing but toil, sweat, and swearing or praying dependent upon one's disposition. The near last shoot on the Oregon Trail is called the Laurel Hill Shoot, where immigrants like my great-grandpa, Dan, wrestled with ropes, pulleys, and sheer strength to lower his wagon and oxen down a near vertical rocky slope to the next section of the trail. Keep in mind, there were five chutes on the Laurel grade, but the Laurel Hill chute was the worst of the bunch. I'm sure the only thing that kept great grandpa and grandma going was the fact they had already come some 2,000 miles and only 50 more to go before reaching Oregon City, Oregon, the end of the trail. Their eyes were resolutely fixed on the final destination. The book of Hebrews was written to folks who were gravely struggling with their faith during a difficult time in their spiritual journey. The writer encouraged them with these words, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Grab a rope and pull, my friends. Don't lose heart. Like Jesus, there's joy set before you, too. This is Daniel LeBoon Markham with CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, 
here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to reach out to all you mama bears out there and tell you how much we love and appreciate you. There, I, my, my newsletter I, I just wrote this week, I, I have this picture of this grizzly bear surrounded by, I think, five cubs. She's the oldest known female grizzly bear in the world. And she looks ready and she looks fierce to protect her. She's way up on her hind legs and looking because there's something that's concerning her coming towards her cubs. And that's my image of the mama bears. I don't think of them as a cuddly little teddy bear. I think of them as there's nothing more fierce than a mama bear in your prayers and in your virtue and your in your in your and almost your desperate fortitude in loving the men in your lives. And so we have a special place for you at at the at uh, Deep Adventure Ministries. You can go to deepadventure.com and become a member of the Mama Bears Mug, Mug Club. And when you subscribe to my newsletter, every week we have a special segment for you on the uh, somewhere in that in that newsletter. So we invite the Mama Bears to become part of the pack. We're with Alan Smith. He's a member of Bears Man Cave. He's a member of Knights on Bikes. He's, uh, he's an author, uh, published many books. He's got a new book coming out, too, and his whole focus of his ministry is to get uh, Fulton Sheen's word out to the world. What's it like, Alan, when, you know, dude, Fulton Sheen must dig on you, man. I mean, like, Fulton Sheen knows Alan Smith. You know what I mean? He's praying for you. He, you know, what's it like to—, to you, you kind of got his back. He's got your back because you've been working with him, right? You've been working with the, uh, um, the progress towards sainthood for Fulton Sheen, right? What's, what's going on there? Yeah, uh, I always say good news is coming. And uh, again, Fulton Sheen, I like to say saints pick us. And uh, that is so true. I think we have our favorite saints, but every so often a saint, a saint will shoulder up beside us and say, can I join you for this journey? Wow. And I think that's what Fulton Sheen did in my life. He, uh, he got my attention with, uh, again, the first book I read of his back in uh, was 2009. And it was the book Victory Over Vice, and we're going to share a little bit oh of that gosh. today. Yeah. But um, I just started to just share Sheen and uh, had a love of just, um, uh, you know, getting him on the radio, uh, sharing him with seminarians. And uh, the next thing you know, uh, the Bishop of Peoria, Illinois, Bishop Daniel Jenke, uh, wrote me a letter and said, would you like to sit on the board of directors uh, for the Sheen Foundation, which is the cause and, for his and, and what do you say? Let me pray about that. Or you say, let me think about it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, I'm the only non-American on that board because um, I'm from Canada. So um, yeah, we, we again, forgive you. We forgive you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I tell you, it's been a journey. We knew uh, right from the beginning uh, there was a number of good holy men uh, that had shoulder up with the cause and they said you know we're going to be in a battle because satan he doesn't want <laughs> he doesn't want sheen's writings to uh you know get out there at a fast pace and so we knew there'd be roadblocks uh with this journey and if you follow the sheen cause uh, there has been a few obstacles and roadblocks set in place and so uh, and we even just had one recently we had a date set for a beatification mass and uh, a postponement but um, i like to say to people be of good cheer because they can't take away the miracle when that little boy was dead for 61 minutes and that family prayed for the intercession of fulton sheen to save their child and god answered that prayer that miracle was approved by the vatican and so you can never take that away that that's that's a keeper that's and that a little keeper. that little boy is a keeper Absolutely. I believe he's he's not a little boy anymore. He's uh, he's growing up fast. And yet, um, again, the Holy Father, uh, you know, said, let's declare uh, him and bless it and let's uh, move forward. And so the church is uh, awaiting for this great celebration. So uh, just a little uh, bit of a pause. Um, we're sure that things will clear. The air will be cleared very quickly. Well, that's the, that's we'll, the way the Catholic Church does things, right? They do it right. They don't, they, yes. don't, they, don't, they don't pass any yellow lights. They certainly mm -hmm. don't pass any red lights. And that's why we're so comfortably safe within the boundaries of the Catholic Church because the teaching and everything that is done is so, the official teaching of the church and everything that is done is, is just so solid. And I'm sure it's all in God's timing, you know. Yes, yes. We get spoiled sometimes with St. Mother Teresa, St. John Paul II, some of these uh, holy men and women who have, gone through the process really quick. Um, sometimes it would take hundreds of years 
before mm -hmm. someone is declared a saint. So right. I think I think we got spoiled for a while. We thought that Fulton Sheen would be fast tracked, uh, but uh, again, Mother the Angelica is too. Her time. Mother Angelica. I mean, you know, I got to tell yeah. you, I, I, I from the moment she passed away, you know, I just felt this inclination, you know, this sort of an intimate sense to ask her to pray for a ministry. And I think, and I just remember there's certain times when I'm really up against it. And I just ask Mother Angelica to pray for us. You know, it's not something that I think of. It's something that's in my heart that automatically happens. And mm -hmm. I, I get that. I understand that journey towards, I just think she, she, we may find her on that journey too. But let, hey, let's dig into Fulton Sheen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you've got You've got a couple. You've got books out, and you've got more books yeah. coming out. Give us a little right, hint on that right. before we dig yeah. in. I'll hold this up for our YouTube uh, uh, channel watchers. Uh, it's called "Cries of Jesus from the Cross." Uh, released this in 2018, and it's an anthology, which means it's a collection of Sheen's writings. And so I took uh, seven of his little books on the seven last words and put them into one complete volume. And uh, this book has taught uh, tens of thousands of people how to practice virtue, how to uh, turn away from vice, how to love the Blessed Mother even more, how to uh, appreciate the Beatitudes. Uh, there's a lot in this well, book. Let's talk, so, let's talk about that. Let's talk yeah. about the first day. You mentioned that the first thing that Jesus said on the cross, on the second Sermon on the Mount, as you call it, Father. Right. Forgive them, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Um, again, I read this book called Victory Over Vice, which is included in that anthology. And it was Sheen's uh, teaching on how to apply the seven last words as the antidote for the seven deadly sins. And so the sin of anger, I mean, so many of the listeners can uh, identify with this sin. Um, again, it's something that we struggle with, many of us. And yet, Fulton Sheen was saying, I want to give you this beautiful remedy, and let's apply these words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And just ponder that for a moment. Our Lord was innocent, yet he was asking God to forgive these people. And we have to be honest. Uh, when we get mad at our neighbor, let's be honest, as I said before. We don't know our neighbor. We think we know our neighbor, but we haven't lived in their skin. We haven't uh, we weren't in their environment when they grew up. We know very little about our neighbor, yet we're quick to judge. Mm. And so, um, again, Fulton Sheen was saying to me and to so many others, don't be too quick to make a judgment. How about you look into your own soul first and realize that didn't God forgive you of a number of great sins? Like, be honest. Be honest, Al Smith. Be honest, Bear Wozniak. Uh, God has forgiven both of you great sins. So don't be too quick to judge others and to get angry. And I tell you, those words really soothe. Uh, it, they calm my anger and because I, I took the time to ponder on that. And I'm sure you can relate to that too, Bear. Uh, again, because you've been in a, what I call a competitive environment for a long time. And anger can sometimes win the day. Yeah, I, I know, you know... Um... If you, if you want to learn how to not be angry, God's going to put you in a position. He puts you like, if, the mole, if, you, if you're saying, Lord, please make me more patient, get ready because he's kind of put you in a lot of positions where you're going to have to be more patient. Lately, I've been golfing with my son, Jeremiah, and it's, <laughs> it's a, definitely a trial. So, so yeah. in that context, though, um, what, what would be the... the the mortal sin that you're spe specifically referring to and then the, the maybe the counterpoint of the virtue yeah well i think uh again we have to go what sheen would do is he not only just talk about the seven you know the seven last words from the cross he tied the scriptures in so beautifully and so for that sin of anger and using the words father forgive them for they know not what they do he would then say remember uh you have to forgive seven times 70 oh. seven times Oh, um, in one day, no, 490 yeah. times a day. Yeah. yeah, and so there is no limit to his forgiveness. So always remember that. Always mm. remember that. Um, the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The virtue that he um, wants us to meditate on is the virtue of fortitude. Mm. And uh, because when you think about our Lord on the cross, to be nailed to that cross, he had to have the intestinal fortitude to journey that the road of Calvary, like to get there. And of course, his agony in the garden, all of these things. 
but he shows us the way to help us to practice the virtue of fortitude. It's so interesting how the counter virtue to anger is fortitude, just to to um, to withstand whatever you're you, you're up against and to stay yes. the course. Uh, we're talking with Al Smith. He is an, uh, a prolific author. More books coming out too. Who who published the book that you that was about the the Jesus on the cross, the sayings of Jesus yeah. on the cross? Yeah, uh, Sophia Institute Press. And, uh, they have partnered with me for quite some time, and uh, again, I'm a writer at Catholic Exchange Magazine, uh, which they're of course uh, they run that. And uh, this is what's so nice about uh, being with solid publishers. They truly have this mission to say, we want to get this material out to the public. Well, we're excited. We love, we love Sophia. We have a lot of their authors on our posts, on, on our show. We're talking with Al Smith. He's, uh, he just loves uh, Fulton Sheen. Fulton Sheen loves him, too, I think. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak with a deep adventure moment coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. One of the reasons why Waikiki is the happiest place in the world is because there's so many people experiencing for the first time surfing. Even right now, there's surfers right out in front of me. There's about a dozen of them paddling out that are going to go out and surf for the first time in their life. And they fall and they wipe out and they laugh and they giggle. You know, surfers fall more than little children do. We wipe out all the time. The other thing about surfers is we haven't forgotten to play. We haven't forgotten to go out and have fun and frolic with the wave. But you know, in your life, be willing to try something new like these new surfers that are paddling out right here. Be willing to step out and do something, broaden your life, broaden your life. Maybe you have social anxiety. Go and join, um, join a group in your church. Uh, maybe there's something God's calling you to do. Maybe it's to lead a Bible study. You just don't know how to do it. And you're afraid to do it. Step out and do it. Remember Peter. We were there in the, the Sea of Galilee just a couple months ago. Peter had to step out of that boat. And when he did, Jesus was right there to help him. So remember, surfers fall more than anybody. It's okay to fail. In fact, if you're not failing at something, you're living way too far inside your comfort zone. You should always be stretching your horizon. You should always be testing something new. And remember, God has an adventure for you. The most radical thing you can do in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And when you do, you don't become less of who you are. You become more like who you are. You're afraid, well, if I do that, God's going to change my personality and I'm not going to be the person I am. The fact is, when you abandon yourself to God's will, that natural gifting that He's given you is filled with the power of His Holy Spirit and you break out into whole new dimensions in your life and a whole new adventure. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, aloha, everybody out there. We're talking to the men specifically here. Dudes. What are you doing? Come join the Man Cave. Go to deepadventure.com. Al Smith's a member of the Man Cave, our guest, our guest uh, uh, adventure guide today. 
And uh, it, it's just a great, what it is, it's a kind of like a place for knuckle dragging Neanderthal uh, misfits to go who want to go deeper with God and uh, know that they need the fellowship of other men. Iron sharpens iron, as the scripture says. And so you don't have to be, no, no one who comes to the, to the man cave comes because they're perfect. It's because they, they come because they need to be um, inspired, encouraged, and challenged by other men. So that's what the Man Cave is all about. It's a secret Facebook group, but you can't join it on Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com. And I know uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, we're going to be having a Man Cave uh, Zoom meetup. We've been doing them for several years now, and it's really cool. Well, all, all of a sudden, the people that you know follow you on Facebook and places like that or listen to the show, all of a sudden we get to have face FaceTime with each other in these Zoom video chats, and and it, uh, we spend exactly one hour, and we just talk about manly virtue. We're with Al Smith. He's uh, he's uh, his focus. His whole focus of his ministry is getting the words of Fulton Sheen out. What's the name of your website, Al? Uh, BishopSheenToday.com. That's what you told it's, me last time. Yes, and well, I'll tell you it again. <laughs> so it's not tomorrow. It's going to be still called today. That's right. It's okay. always going to be BishopSheenToday.com. Al, uh, we're talking about the, 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 seven, the seven last sayings of Christ from the cross, what Fulton Sheen had to say, that we've talked about, Father, forgive them, which, you, which he tied to the uh, mortal sin of anger, which, and, and, and then the virtue of fortitude. What, what about the, the, the second saying of Jesus? Okay, so the second saying is uh, that exchange he had with a good thief, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And what Fulton Sheen wants us to uh, tackle is the sin of envy. And uh, again, I took a long time to work on this sin because I think sometimes we judge others too quickly. We hear a few things and generally we envy a lot of people. Oh, he has better looks than me or a little bit more money than me or he got that promotion that I always wanted. Uh, life sometimes passes us by mm. and we can be a little bit bitter and that yeah. spirit of envy can creep in. And so you look at this dynamic between the good thief and the bad thief. Uh, the good thief had no envy in him. Mm. And he even was bold enough to correct his fellow thief when he said to him, do you not fear God? We deserve this punishment, yet he is innocent. Um, again, just a beautiful rebuke, and I sometimes look and say, I wish I had the zeal of a good thief to mm -hmm. sometimes correct uh, people when they speak out against you the do. church. You do, El. You do. I know. You do. But there's times where I failed that. So uh, the good thief is a reminder. So uh, Fulton Sheen wanted everyone to pay attention to the sin of envy and to meditate on those words, uh, this day, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And um, again, because the good thief showed the Lord pity. And uh, of course, he asked that beautiful request, remember me, mm. remember me. And uh, then he heard those beautiful words this day. So uh, again, uh, it's a sin that uh, is rampant in the world today, envy is. Uh, but yet if we spend a little bit of time looking to the good thief for that inspiration, uh, you know, all will be well. Aquinas that I think is the worst of the mortal sins because envy is different than jealousy. Jealousy says, I want what that person has. And envy just says, I don't want that person to have that. Yes. You know, and yes. in the body of Christ, we have to be each other's biggest fans. When I see Al Smith out there on the front lines, I need to be going, dude, go for it, man. Go for it. We, we need all the help we can get and not be like, I don't know. I think sometimes there's a tendency to, of, of envy within, within even people who are involved in ministry or within the church. And we can't do that. We have to always be promoting each other's ministries and uh, mm -hmm. whether it's a, a, a silent ministry where it's mostly intercession and prayer or, or more public ministry or whatever I always tell people walk into the front lines we need all the help we can get but envy is just an empty sin it's just saying I, I don't like that person having that right. and we need to learn it, it, it I know Al because I've struggled with that in my life as a pro surfer and all that stuff I, I, I had to I had to make a decision to turn that and say, I'm going to promote that person's, uh, I'm going to be all for, and I'm going to cheer for that person. And it takes like a cutting into that deep part of your soul. And then there's just this beautiful release of, of becoming a, a cheerleader for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all on the same team. Uh, you're yeah. in, you know, what you said in the introduction, 
we're on this team. We're on this team. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, let, let's talk about the virtue, uh, the virtue that Sheen uh, wants to complement uh, yeah. to help us to yeah. overcome the sin of envy. And that's the virtue of hope. Um, oh, again, yeah. uh, the good thief had hope in the Lord. Um, for that moment, he was just, he was, of course, he's dying on the cross. And he saw in Jesus a king. And he just put his trust in Jesus. You know, we think of the divine mercy, Jesus, I trust in you. And the good thief was just saying, I trust in you. I hope in you. And so he gives us that saying, hey, practice the virtue of hope and be like the good thief. Yes, you're a sinner. You deserve a great punishment, but have hope in Jesus. That guy had more hope. Think about it. Oh, you know, he's dying on the cross and then Jesus is in more agony than him because of the, all the torture he went through. And he has the audacity to look over at him and say, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's the Holy Spirit drawing him to Jesus. You know, to, to see a man who's, to have hope in that person, to, for him to speak those words, what a powerful example of hope. We gotta, we gotta ask that guy to pray for us. <laughs> Yes. Because we know yes. he's in heaven. Well, <laughs> well and his, his name is Dismas. So Dismas. I think um, Dismas, St. Dismas is the name of the good thief. Well, uh, thank so, you. You're Saint welcome. Dismas. I'll keep that. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. That's the only right. thing I didn't know about our faith. Well, <laughs> you, you might be surprised. <laughs> you know, it it's so be... funny. As much as you think you know, you don't know anything. <laughs> There's so much to the Catholic faith. So yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Did you want to say anything more no, about hope? No, okay. well, Pope, Pope Emeritus Benedict uh, said um, he's still learning. He's still learning. He still hasn't learned everything. He's saying um, it'll take you a while. You know, yeah, you're just never going to get there. There's as you deep never. as the ocean is and wide as the ocean is, it's more than that. What about right. the next saying from Jesus? Okay, from Jesus on the so cross? the third word was those beautiful words of woman, behold your son and behold your mother. And I tell you, this is the sin um, against purity that uh, Fulton Sheen knows that the world mm. is struggling with. I mean, we live in an age of carnality like no other. I mean, it is what I call a dirty world. And uh, so the sin of lust is just running rampant in society. And uh, yet Fulton Sheen is saying, hey, I want to give you this remedy, which is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And um, Again, he, ex he extends to us an invitation to fall in love with a higher love. Uh, a lot of times the world, we fall into those lower loves mm. of, of lust and money and all this stuff. Yet, do we fall in love with the Blessed Virgin Mary? Do we fall in love with God the Father? Do we fall in love with the saints? What are our higher loves? Do we have any higher loves? Mm -hmm. And this is the key to overcoming lust, is to develop a higher love. But most importantly, go to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because mm -hmm. who was her companion at the foot of the cross? Magdalene, mm -hmm. a converted prostitute. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. again, go to Mary. Um, mm -hmm. She's purity. So mm -hmm. if you want to be trained up in how to be a good son, a good daughter, uh, to be pure, go to Mary. You know, our Lord, yeah. Al, it's interesting how many different men that I've. Uh, talked to through the ministry what was your key to overcoming lust mary pray the rosary ask mary to intercede for you but it's it's in and in, in in just contemplating her um for some reason is that was it was it, it unlocked that of course she's the the ultimate example of, of chaste purity not example but a a a, a, a vessel of of grace um and so and so the so the 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 mor the mortal sin that you're referring to is lust, right? And the yeah. uh, and the virtue would be the virtue is prudence, yeah. prudence, oh, and yeah, because I, I thought, think I would have thought uh, temperance, but okay. That's well, no prudence because what um, you know, our Lord was prudent, and He said, "Who better to leave these wayward children with than anybody else but my mother?" And so, of course, this is why he loves us so much, is he says, wow. I love you that I want to give you my mother, and she'll take good care of you. Uh, it was the prudent thing for her to do. And it's prudence for us. I mean, this is one saying, I use this all the time, uh, Fulton Sheen would remind us, don't do anything that your mother would be embarrassed for. Um, you know, don't do anything that your mother would, wouldn't approve of. Yes. And 
it's so true. The prudent thing. I want to make sure that my mama is happy that I come back at the end of the day and say, mom, I did you proud. I did you proud. Let's take a break here, Alan. We got to take a break. Let's come right back to that same point though. We're talking with my friend, Al Smith. It's been so cool to get to know you over the last few, you know, after what a, cool thing that I get to hang out with Al Smith every now and then. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, We'll be right back with more. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. And here I am. I'm suffering for Jesus in paradise. I'm looking out my window. Since I had coffee this morning, there's a south swell, a kind of a southeast swell kind of starting to fill in. If you ever want to know, check out the view I have. Go to surfnewsnetwork.com. That they, my buddy has his, his camera in there. There's about 20,000 hits a day, <laughs> people checking out uh, the surf in Waikiki. But right now, normally this time of the year, it's kind of flat. But there's a new little swell coming, and I'm here stuck talking with Al Smith, my, my friend Al, Al Smith, the author of so many of Fulton Sheen books. Welcome back to the show, Al. Bear, it's great to be here. It's you got to come out here. here, dude. We're going to have our we're going to have our Deep Adventure Quest retreat here, December seventh through the eleventh, and we invite everybody. Bring your families. It's a great place for families, and we're going to have all, all of our retreat elements. You know, being out, you know, the the talks and dialogue out on the beach or in the park next to us and the catholic church is right next to me and and uh and maybe parents can help watch each other's children because they can be right there on the beach while we're having our retreat and uh so we invite al smith and everyone else out there to go to go to our website deepadventure.com and you can find out more about uh the december 7th through 11th uh, deep adventure quest retreat it actually opens on um pearl harbor day so when we start our retreat Al, we're talking about the seven last sayings of Christ uh, from your book, uh, from Fulton Sheen. What's the next one that? What What's the next one that okay. you want to cover? We're on the sixth word, which is, uh, "It is finished," and uh, this is our Lord's battle cry against the sin of sloth. And um, again, many of us um, have, especially I think, of the sin of spiritual sloth. Um, some of us are lazy and fall into the physical side of sloth but i think there is this sense that we all kind of feel guilty about spiritual sloth and uh so again you think of the words lord uh Mm. the words of our lord it is finished uh he's saying to his father in heaven father i 
I completed my mission. You asked me to come to this earth to take on human flesh, to preach, to teach, to witness, and to mm. lay down my life for my friends uh, so that everyone could be saved. It's finished. I've completed my life. And uh, again, that's a battle cry for us to complete our life, to save our souls. And uh, I think this is something that we have to, uh, you know, um, I want to say lift everyone up to say, hey, let's do this together. I'm going to help you complete your mission. You help me to complete my yeah. mission. In fact, we can't do it without each other. Yeah. We can't. We can't. Well, what's the virtue that goes with that? Uh, it's justice. The virtue ah. of justice. Because mm. we have to give God his due. And this mm -hmm. is what happens a lot in this world is we don't. Mm. Uh, we don't give God uh, a proper praise, proper credit. Um, again, our God is a just God, but uh, I think it's a beautiful virtue to practice mm. uh, because it's so lacking today's world. And I know you've spoken about justice a number of times in your presentations. Uh, and I, I love that you uh, dig the virtues and that mm -hmm. you have been preaching the virtues. I'm such an example of them. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> no, but, but yeah, I mean, I love, the, I love to talk about the virtues because it, get, it gets, gives people traction. Yeah. And you know what it is? It's it's forgotten. Like I when I put together the anthology of these seven books into one, uh, it was the 1940 book on the virtues and it was never republished. No one ever mm -hmm. picked it up for 80 years. And uh, because who wants to practice the virtues? The world's running away from them. Yet, I think it's the perfect time now to uh, pick up the seven virtues and practice them uh, to make reparation for the seven deadly sins that are running rampant in the world today. Uh, but let's finish up on the seventh and final word, because I know our time is coming to a close here. And the seventh word that our Lord spoke from the cross was, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And here he's trying to help us to overcome the sin of greed. Um, and I think, you know, greed is um, very prevalent, I find, in the elderly, um, you know, the more mature crowd, uh, because they've worked so hard for all of their stuff, they sometimes get possessive at the end. And yet, uh, Fulton Sheen is saying to us, take a little bit of time and ponder those words. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Our Lord was saving the best to last. He had given away his clothing to the executioners. He gave away his mother and his uh, mm. best friend to each other. And yet he saved his holy will for the very last. He gave mm. God his holy will. And I think this is something that we need to do too is, Lord, may my will be your will. Uh, may I unite my will to yours. And uh, I think that's something we forget sometimes is, are we uniting our will to God's will? And our Lord gives us a beautiful example by those words, uh, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Pray for us, El, those, me and everyone else there who, that moment of saying, I abandon myself to your will, Lord. You know, right. really, really surrendering to Jesus. Pray, pray for yeah. us. Yeah, and the virtue that we can practice is pray, the virtue pray, pray, of... Pray, pray that right now. Oh, let's pray for yeah. those struggling with greed. Yes, yeah. Lord God, uh, this world is uh, into itself. It's uh, very possessive. And uh, again, we have fallen prey to the spirit of greed. And so, Lord, we ask you to release us from this spirit. Help us to be generous. Help us to be charitable to our fellow man. Help us to give uh, alms to the poor, to uh, reach out of our uh, own little bubbles and to uh, serve you uh, in mankind. And But again, we pray that you would say, Send us this grace through the hands of our Blessed Mother to overcome the sin of greed. Mm -hmm. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I just have this image of the little, what's the first little first lesson you have to teach a kid? Yeah, the first word a kid usually le learns is the word mine. <laughs> you know? And our whole life we have to learn to say, it's all yours, Lord. And so what's the oh, counterpoint yeah. of virtue? Uh, it's the... Um, it's the virtue of charity, mm. a virtue of charity. Um, again, we need to come out of ourselves and to give some of our time away, our talent, our treasure. Um, again, that's what's going to heal us. That's what gonna, is going to help break us from this, um, I want to say slavery to greed, is to uh, practice the virtue of charity. You know, I, I watch these dramas and 
and I think and, and, and I think about all these people that just want to get richer, richer, richer. Frank, frankly, I really like having a surfboard, you know. But I was with a group of my friends. I write about this in my book. We were down at County Line surfing. And after the surf, this is in California back in the day, I, I made the statement, you know, all you really need in life is a new pair of socks. Because in California, you wear socks. It get, gets cold there, right? Here we wear slippers. We wear flip-flops. But oh, they're, they're like, I call it the poor man's luxury, right? Go to Safeway. While you're there, buy six new pairs of white socks. And all the guys go, yeah, dude, that's all you really need, just new socks. And then after contemplating they, that, we go, oh, well, you need a surfboard, too. <laughs> and, well, you need wax for the surfboard. And then you need someplace to put your sh socks and wax. So you need a bucket. And it got to the point where all you really need is a sailboat. What size sailboat, you know? And so it kind of goes, it kind of goes on like that. But all we really need is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, uh, and then the Lord, the Lord provides gives us stewardship but it all belongs right. to him yeah yeah fulton sheen said remember the more ties we have to this earth the harder it will be for us to leave the earth mm. i'll say that again the more ties that we have to this earth the harder it will be for us to leave this earth and uh again that's why detachment is so it's the first healthy. lesson it's the first lesson it is detachment it is yeah you know, and you were also, I think, um, Fulton Sheen would say, remember, you were never meant to be truly happy here on this earth. Mm -hmm. Where you're meant to be happy is in heaven, mm. is in heaven. And mm. so um, always remember when we uh, are dissatisfied with this world. You're supposed that, to be. You're supposed to be. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you glad, but, though, uh, that I'm sorry, I'll go ahead. No, no. And this is good because I think many people who are listening at home are nodding their head in agreement saying, yeah, our true home is in heaven. And this is a camping trip. And I want to be the best camper I can be. Oh, be man, I got to really, You want to be a happy <laughs> camper. Dude, I like, what Jim, I like what Jim Gaffigan says. There's no such thing as a happy camper. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's but, funny. You know, we're on pilgrimage. We're on pilgrimage. This is not... Uh, our true homes in heaven. Uh, yeah. This, as I said, was before. it Teresa and Avila or, or, or Catherine of Siena that said, "When we get to heaven, we'll think of of, of our time on earth as just uh, 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 spending the night in an in, inconvenient hotel." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've, you know, you and I've been on the road. We know what it's like to spend nights. We're talking with Al Smith. Al, where can people find you? Uh, my website: bishopsheentoday.com. Again, I'll say that one more time, Bishop Sheen today. Go, go there. And, and as we're talking about greed and holding on to things. I'd encourage everybody, go to that website and write a check. Get, uh, um, put, your, put your donation in to help uh, further the cause that, that Al Smith has just given his whole life to, furthering the message of Fulton Sheen. Uh, i got to say goodbye. But uh, Al Smith, he's written, written several books. Sophia Institute uh, is his publisher. Go there and, and, uh, and to his website, Bolt. Bishop, full, what is it? Bishopsheentoday.com. Hey, dude, I was doing so good in the last three seconds. I stumbled. I, uh, I try so hard to be a good broadcaster. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Ha. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.